Hey, welcome back to Oklahoma. So, I want to do a quick video on something that I just built for any of you guys that are into hunting. And I'm going to show you. It's an easy way to make a backstop for your archery targets. I'm headed out here right now to the target itself. I'm going to flip the camera around and show you what I did. It's a really easy build, not that expensive. Let's get to it. Okay, so we're walking up towards the target now. I set it out at the back of the property so that we can actively shoot out to 70 yards. I don't know why you'd ever need to do that, but if you're comfortable at 60, you ought to be able to drill it at 20 yards. And this is what I have. Now, I took a cheap $80 3D target, which I don't really recommend so much. It was just inexpensive. If you'll notice, the target is pretty narrow as far as how thick it is. There's probably better targets out there, but this does it for now. And we were having a lot of trouble right here on the legs. The legs are always made out of hard plastic. If you happen to miss and hit that, it's so hard to get your arrow out. And sometimes you end up damaging your arrow while you're trying to remove it and all that. So I ditched the legs after they had several holes in them. I have a real habit of trying to hit really tight right here in the shoulder area. And sometimes I flubbed it and hit down low. So I took this target after we had already shot a million holes in it and I completely coated this area and the whole entire backside of this deer, if you'll notice, it's black because I took some flex seal that you can get off of Amazon or wherever, it's pretty common stuff, but it's pretty tough. And I coated three heavy coats on the backside and three heavy coats on this side. And then I repainted the target and put a, some uh, circles on there to aim at. I then put an eye bolt right in the top of its head and screwed that down in there and I used Loctite construction adhes adhesive right here and for the horns because these antlers have a tendency just to fall off all the time. I used fixture chain like you would hang a chandelier in your house here and on the ass end of the deer. I put in some eye bolts up here to hang it by and the target will actually move a little bit. That's not a problem. I did this after the fact. What I, uh, I, I watched several YouTube videos on this. I'm not the guy that came up with this, but mine's a little different, I guess. These backstop mats are made, they're, they're actually horse stall mats and they're, they are um, six feet long by four feet wide. And so I built my frame using four by four posts here and here. And I, I separated those and made them eight feet overall so that the mat would actually come up to the outer edge to give it something to lay against. And then I laid this all out on the ground and I put in a two before here up and down and then a two before on top of that laying flat. You can see that. The two before on top goes to the outer edge of the four befores as does the two before that's um, laying up and down. I did the same thing on the bottom. Once I got that initial frame built, 
and put in these gussets to give it a little added strength I had basically just this horseshoe shaped frame going from here to here to here to here then the way I did it I took this whole frame and I laid it on the ground facing downward I had my holes already dug so I laid it with the actual bottom edge of these 4x4s laying right against the front edge of the hole laying flat on the ground I then took two horse stall mats that I purchased at Tractor Supply they're $34 and some change a piece they are approximately I think they're a little more than a half inch thick and they weigh almost 100 pounds a piece so be prepared when you go to purchase these they're a pain in the rear even to get in your truck to get home so then what I did I when I had the frame laying down on the ground I laid these horse mats in place on the top edge then I took another two by four and I sandwiched this two before right here and the two before on the inside I put the horse mat in place and sandwiched those together and screwed them into place with four inch screws all the way along this upper edge I tried to get them as square as possible but that is really not an easy task once I had those horse stall mats sandwiched in there and screwed tight, I then had to wrestle this framework from the ground, picking it up from this general area and raising it up until I could jab the bottom edges of the 4x4s into the hole and got it in the standing position. And it's better if you've got more than one person if you can swing that. Once I had that standing up, I leveled up, let it dry for 24 hours. And then I built this square frame, which is eight feet long, using these two befores here, the two before on the back, put on my side pieces. And then I lifted that onto the top and slid it down and screwed it into place at about a maybe a 15 degree angle so that rain would run off towards the back. I left approximately between here and here six inches, let the rest lay out front. Once I had that sitting in place, I put in these pieces and I had to do a little bit of cutting to make it fit, but I put in three of these in between. And I did that just so I'd have the framework for these eye bolts. I've yet to put the tin on top, but I'm eventually gonna cover this whole thing with regular tin like you'd put on the top of your shop. And that's what I've got on the roof of the man cave. Uh, R panels is what they're called. And once all that was dried and cured, I painted the whole thing black. And I'm here to tell you, this has been a game changer for us because you can be several yards back and shoot and if you miss the target, your arrow is not gonna go very far through that horse stall mat. In fact, it's a real pain in the rear to pull those out of there. It's really dense rubber or whatever it's made of. It works out fantastic. This gives you a large area, and I left this purposely off the ground quite a ways so that you could put a block target on the ground right here if you chose to, underneath the deer to shoot at as well. And I tried to get the seams as close as I could together. They're not perfect, 
but it's close enough that that would even stop an arrow even if you managed to hit right in the seam. This so far has worked fantastic and it helps me and my son to be able to really back off and get some longer yardages in without having to worry about losing arrows. Man, we chased arrows. If you look out the, behind my fenced in area where I've got to shoot, my property looks like Vietnam everywhere back there. We leave it there for a reason because we deer hunt about three to 500 yards back there behind all that. But this works out amazing. I would recommend getting a little better quality target to start off or you know later down the road but this works pretty good for an economy target i'll try to leave links in the description on the target i bought and the horse stall mats but they're available i know for sure at tractor supply i don't know if you can find those anywhere else but this is what i did i'm very happy with it i hope that this helps you if you decide to build something like this it's definitely not rocket science you just want to make sure everything's pretty good and square. Um, I just used eight foot four by four, so I only ended up burying those about 22 inches in the ground as opposed to two feet so that I'd have a little bit of airspace underneath. And the mats are still able to hang down over that bottom two before. And then per personally, I came down about halfway and screwed into the wood there. I screwed into the wood along the bottom in a couple of places to hold the mat in place. And now you get some movement, but not so much movement that if you had a storm blow in or something that those things are gonna be swinging like curtains. Because I honestly believe that you gotta have some support there. Anyway, this is what I did. Hope you got some good out of this. If you did, throw me a like. Give me some comments. I hope you subscribe to my channel. And we'll see you on the next one.